Well, hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Bachman has recently released the InScale SC44 chargers that you see running around Amtrak now. We're gonna get into this box, see what you get with this locomotive. That is TCS Wow Sound equipped and DCC, of course. So let's get started next. Okay, as you can see, the box is mostly clear. Clear lid pops right off. Definitely don't lose that though, because they tend to disappear, the clear box lids. There's also a plastic blister pack. It's kind of wedged in here, as you can see. And that houses the locomotive and the manual. And behind that is a Bachman warranty card, or I'm sorry, a uh, Williams catalog sign up so you can sign up for their catalog and then we just slide this blister packaging out the sleeve slides off up top is a quick start guide and zoom out a little bit so you can see that better but the quick start guide here has many many pages several pages i should say of functions and other information regarding this locomotive and DC operation, DCC operation, programming, throttle modes, light features, etc. And then on the bottom, there's some more paperwork tucked in here. It's the exploded parts diagram. So if you have a part that you need to replace, you correspond with that number and you can contact Bachman Parts. And there's the limited warranty card, one year limited warranty on locomotives. Also inside, taped up here, is some extra couplers. Basically the uh, older, the other type of coupler for N-Scale, it's like a hook type of coupler, a little hard to see. And then the locomotive itself, which we will do a360 on and take a closer look all right there's the whole locomotive but it's pretty long for in scale so we're gonna have to zoom in a little further so you can see the details usually one of the great tests for nicely detailed in scale locomotives is if you're zoomed in and it looks like an HO scale locomotive and this one seems to have that type of detail very very detailed locomotive here with the windshield wipers on the front you've got uh, the brake line hosing MU receptacles lights even the destination is legible there wind deflectors on the side handrails for crew entry on the side there's strobe lighting up top as you can see as we turn to the cab you've got the cab entry ladder, the number on the front. You've also got the locomotive, locomotive designation there right below the cab number. You can see uh, the trucks there. Also this little area here is like a semi-transparent area on the real locomotives that light up for basically maintenance on all of the interior components so you can see that area there and we'll see how that looks on the track Amtrak Midwest logo on the side you've got that red stripe and that new graphics those new graphics that run all the way along the side of the locomotive so on the back there is a uh, more grab irons there is a door there as well and some rear lighting coupler lots of detail with the accessory hoses even and there's some metal detail as well so metal grab iron detail it's really hard to to see it all because you guys may be looking at it up close but I'm looking at it from about three or four feet away <laughs> so I'm tucked away in the back of my layout here 
because I'm working on scenery. <clears throat> All right, so more of the same on the other side with detail. And there is a magnetic glad hand on the coupler. So for those that want to install the automatic uncoupling areas on your layout, you can do so. I'm going to tip this on its side so you can see the roof detail. We've got the horn tucked away. This is the AC unit for the cab air conditioning up front here. There's um, some fan grills back here for exhaust. And some other molded in details on the roof as well. So we'll go one more time this way so you can see. Of course, the air conditioning unit's tucked in between the two strobe lights. And I will also flip it on its other side so you can see the underside of the locomotive. You've got DCC sound value. It's kind of flipped. I should put it this way, I guess. You can see the wow sound logo and that little area there with the grates is for speaker so that you can have speaker sound coming out you can see just uh, the bottom of the gears located there on the gear covers of the wheels but you can also see some of the underbody detail where they're running some of the plumbing to make that look realistic as well here and here so pretty cool. Let's get this on the track and see what it's about since this is a product demo. We won't spend too much more time on it here. I can do all the testing for the locomotive, but we do have 3.7 ounces on the weight. So I can weigh it for you. I don't have the coupler height for in scale and all those other tests that I do on HO. And just so you know, that is 104 grams. Sorry, I'm trying to get the display to read out but you can't see the display anyway so 3.7 ounces 104 grams okay I've got to start the locomotive by applying track power so I'm going to do that now So much different lighting on here. I will kill the lights later and show you, but you can see that shine through lighting there on the side. But we're going to go through some functions here, starting with just checking uh, right out the gate F0 for headlight. And we'll do bell. Here's horn. That's pretty cool. F3 is short horn. So between the two you can make a nice grade crossing. Let's do that real quick just because I can't resist. F4 is whoosh. Which is like a run by Doppler effect type thing, I believe. That's pretty cool. F5's train brake. I think that's probably when you're moving. Uh, F6 is prime mover ignition. F7 dims the headlight. F8 is a mute, like I mentioned. F9 is dynamic brakes. F10 is manual notch up, notch down.
Well, notch down is F11. K11 is notched down. F12's coupler close, F13 coupler open. It's pretty cool they have two different sounds for that. F14's brake release, 15's traction motor, blower, Sixteen's momentum mode, seventeen's toggle crew alert, eighteen is the mute unmute, nineteen's random whoosh on and off, twenty is grade crossing quill. If that actually there we go. Twenty one forward quill. 22, reverse quill. 23, stop quill. 24, ro rotates the horn and the bell to something else. Kind of afraid to do this. K5 LA. Oh no. SC44 charger, low horn. So yeah, you can rotate that to something else. f 25s windshield wipers, 26 station announcements. Twenty-seven is arriving. Now arriving on track one, southbound train number one fifty-one. Please stand behind the yellow safety line as the train approaches the platform. Only ticketed passengers will be allowed to board the train. So really clear audio there from the TCS sound decoder. I think they really uh, have made a name for themselves in the industry. There's also light mode functions. We don't have time to go through because we went through all of them, but if you activate light mode, which requires you to hit F8 twice in a row, you can independently operate the headlight, <clears throat> the bell, a horn, uh, ditch lights can turn on and off separately with F3, number boards with F4 on the ALC42 only. F5 can disable the automatic strobes on this SC44, F6, directional markers, F7, dims, headlight, F8, mutes again. F9 will independently control those interior corridor work lights that you see off on the side right here. And F10 allows the ditch lights to blink again. And 11 is emergency strobe. So that gives you all the independent features of the actual lighting in that light mode. So because of all this lighting, I'm going to kill some lights so you can see a little better what's going on and we'll get reset at the front of this locomotive. Alright, to your right, right of the screen is that corridor lighting. Then you have your emergency lights, your ditch lights. Uh, you can see when you blow the horn those lights operate. You've got your strobe lights up top. They uh, blink together and they do strobe. So that's really neat as well. And you should even have emergency lights as well. Now I did go ahead and activate the uh, light sound mode, also known as night mode when the audio speaks, but uh, F6 handles these directional lights, not the emergency lights, but the directional lights there. And uh, so when you're in reverse, you know, those directional lights will go on or you can independently turn them off. And again, all the other 
features and lights that you can do uh, separately. So I'm going to hit F8 again to get out of that. Okay, back to regular settings here. Let's go ahead and move this thing. Just check the slow speed control and we'll wrap this product demo up. It's been one of my longer product demos, but I did want to go through all the different sounds of this locomotive. I mean, in scales come so far in just my decade or so in the hobby. I guess it's been closer to 14 years now. But look at that slow speed control. But in scale, the sound and just the, the speed control, the motor control has come so far in such short time in this hobby. So we're moving at two speed steps and you can see that that's really 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 smooth. We'll go ahead and speed it up so you can see a little bit of speed on this thing. You can see the prime mover instantly responds. Now we'll go in reverse here. That one speed step still pretty smooth. There's two, and three. You know, the end scale has just come amazingly far. We're up to six now, and it's completely smoothed out, but still running pretty slowly. You get another glimpse of just the level of detail on this little end scale locomotive. I think very impressive by Bachman. All right, well, as always, I. Look forward to seeing what you have to say in the comments and trying to respond to you if I can. And I just wanted you to take a look at this and uh, see what's out there in InScale. As usual, we try to mix it up with InScale and HO here on the channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on the channel. Take care.